<laughs> so if you have read the Old Testament, you should be aware that um, being a prophet is uh, something that often makes people wish that they were dead. And God made sure that that was put in the Bible. And uh, I can't even describe what the last year of my life has been like. I have, I originally volunteered to give up my life to God and Jesus Christ. But then when things got intense, I did not want any part of it anymore, but I had to endure what I had to endure. And it's almost over, but not quite. Um, he wants me to make this video to describe what hell is like, because for about six months, he um, led me in a, it, it, it's a giant spiritual battle, but he led me into the depths of hell very incrementally. He would lift me up for short periods of time so I could handle it. But he wanted it to be a testimony. And um, he's blocked out a lot of it because when I just start to think about what it was like, I almost hyperventilate. It's let me just tell you the one thing he's kept in my memory. And that is that there are different levels of hell. There are different experiences in hell. But the one that haunts me, absolutely haunts me, is uh, one day, the first time it hit, I had a feeling that I have never experienced feeling this bad in my life and I have suffered with depression I've gone through some rough times but this feeling was distinct and um, he told me that it was the absolute separation from God now he he is with me 24 7 um, it's been literally a year-long spiritual battle that has not ceased for even more than... It has not ceased at all. I have not watched a movie. I have not... Um, I have not enjoyed anything in almost a year. So I was handling it okay, but then I got this feeling. And... At first, I asked him, how can you do this to me? Because it was a feeling that was so bad, it's indescribable. The best way, as I was going through it, I was trying to conceptualize the closest um, explanation of what it felt like. Hell is like you are floating totally alone like you're out in space it definitely had this sense of floating in space and nothing was around you it was total darkness and total and absolute silence so i got in that space which was awful enough but then it was like uh like a metal box had been placed over my head, like a thin metal box. And I knew it was there because it was warm. And so not only was I um, floating through absolute silence and blackness, but it, it was a sense of something being on me that I couldn't get off. One of the worst things that um, I felt was absolute loneliness that I knew I had no one that I could talk to about this. That when I was stuck in that moment with that box on my head, which was the worst feeling I ever felt, which I had to feel 
hundreds of times over a series of months, but it, it was, if I even go to a part of my house where I had this experience, I start to panic. It was that bad. And here's the thing. God never had me feel it for more than about a minute. And each time that I would start to feel it coming on again, I would panic so much that each time he had me feel it, he had me feel it a little bit less so that I didn't fear it more because it was that awful. And I said to myself, how could someone endure this for eternity? It, it's inconceivable. I could not handle it for one minute. And I would panic when it was coming back. And I remember... I remember thinking to myself, okay, I need to run away. I need to get out of here. And there was nowhere to run. I would physically get up, pace my room. And yet th there was just no way out of this darkness. And um, hopefully in the future, you see my videos get a lot brighter and um, more positive. But from what I've been through, I am going to strongly, strongly encourage you to do everything you can to avoid hell. And uh, that is not that complicated. Um, what really needs to be done is that you need to ask Jesus into your heart. It's pretty simple. He is not going to let a wicked person do so. So if you are watching this and you're like, I don't know if I'm worthy, see if you can do it. All that really needs to happen is that you need to um, feel on some level that in ways in your life you have disappointed the Lord. And we all, if we're good at all, we have an inherent understanding that we've done some wrong things. And your creator was watching you. So you kind of say to yourself, huh, well, if there is a creator, man, maybe I'm not as great as I think I am. Maybe I need to, to kind of apologize. And then very simply just say the words, Jesus, if you'll have me, I'd love to have you in my heart. You can say, Jesus, I'm not sure you're real, but I would like to have you into my heart. Um, any, any kinds of words to those effects. The reason why, and no one knows this, but God has revealed this to me. The reason you have to ask is because that is how you're born again or baptized and God has contracts with the devil and he has very strict rules about how things have to run. It's just like any business. If you don't have a set of, um, of structures in place to make things run properly, everything falls apart. So at some point in time, um, God and uh, Satan came to the agreement that um, someone had to personally ask Jesus Christ into their heart. And um, Satan took advantage of that. He got his foot in the door of several churches and made them believe that being born again was not necessary, that water baptism was enough. And... I'm trying to see what he wants me to say. There, um, there are some surprises and revelations that have ensured that people in the past who have been good human beings, who have either not heard the word or rejected it for a reason that they didn't have much control over, God has made... Uh,
He just stopped me. I'm trying to figure out why. What do you want to say, Lord? I want to say that everyone on earth from this generation absolutely must be born again through asking my son into their heart. There will be absolutely no exceptions. But if you have a family member from the past who you know only had a water baptism, I have very surprising things that the world is going to find out about. But what you need to know right now is that you will experience what Kimberly experienced for eternity if you do not get born again through asking Jesus into your heart. So saith the Lord God Almighty. Amen. So you just heard directly from the Lord. Um, he can take my mouth and say what he wants. And that was uh, his main message. So anyway, um, I'm glad I don't remember more about the six months that I spent on the precipice of hell, but I encourage you to really think about what that means, the word eternity. We do not die. Death is an illusion. And I found that out because I wanted to die so badly and I realized he wasn't going to let me take my life. And if I did, I'd just end up wherever he was going to put me. We do not die. All right. Uh, God bless you. God bless those that you love. And um, hopefully you're right with the Lord. Amen.